Hi, you're watching Martial Reader. In the previous chapter, Master Gu have obtained the demonic halberd and killed Yi Chen, while his fiance is waiting for his return on the upper realm. Now on to the next part. A flashback of a memory of Yu Ming Kong's past life. The people are shouting with disbelief and saying, how could the peerless and dignified fourth princess of the immortal dynasty be a demonic cultivator? Even thinking about it horrifies them. If it wasn't for young Master Gu who found out her true identity during the night of marriage, they're afraid even he himself would have been accused. While Yu Ming Kong struggles to even defend herself, at the same time the people are shouting that all demonic cultivators should be dead and to kill her on the spot. Master Gu demand for their silence and state, by the law of the heavens, demonic cultivators can't coexist with us cultivators due to their trickery and potential harm that they will bring. Since him and Yu Ming Kong were supposed to get married today, logically he shall personally execute her. As Master Gu was approaching her, she says to him that he's so cruel and that she never imagined the person she loved the most to be him. And in the end, the person who will be killing her would still be him. Then she got stabbed. Now at the present Yu Ming Kong is holding her anger as she thinks to herself. For 3,000 years, she disregarded everything and even went into conflict with her father in order to help Master Gu establish the very first immortal dynasty clearing his name countless of times as a demonic cultivator while waiting for him for 3,000 years. In exchange for that, all she got was that mocking smile and scorn glare on the day of their marriage, and adds that she trusted Master Gu so much, but instead she was fooled by that act of his, becoming a tool for him, taking on the name as the one that inherited the demonic arts, and died in his hands but in this life that she have reborn, she will definitely expose him, and take away everything from Master Gu. She will make him an outcast, and give him the same look as he cry and beg while she imprison him, and she will torture him to the brink of death, she believes they will meet very soon. In a change of scene, Ming Lao activate the great noble family's welcoming temple, its sole purpose is to bring the young master back to the family, it can be used across many realms. As they are climbing the stairs Master Gu asks Elder Ming, that once they have arrived in the upper realm, he will leave Miss Su and Lady Lin's accommodation to his hands. After that Master Gu arrived at the upper realm, and was greeted by his father. So the father named Lin Tian asks if everything went well, and adds that during his trip to the lower realm, those old men have been secretly keeping tabs on his movements. To which Master Gu replies that those old men probably have already heard that he have sealed away the demonic weapon when he was in the lower realm and the news of countless cultivators making a statue of him for his accomplishment. This news made Lin Tian happy, and asks to have a look at the weapon that was once wielded by the demon lord. At the same time he saw it he says, it seems like he have quite the fortune, this method of retrieving it from empty air. Even he can't seem to have a clue on how it is done, not bad, for it to have become a weapon with a living spirit and advises his son to keep it, since only him and his mother know about Master Gu's possession of the demonic heart to which Master Gu agreed. After that, Master Gu is on his way to meet his mother, while his father notifies him that after a while, that girl Ming Kong will be accompanying her dad to discuss the marriage of the both of them, and since he is her fiancé, his father advises him to try not to be cold to her like he usually are to others, and adds that he used to complain about her methods not being remarkable enough, but these past few months her actions truly make one gasp in admiration. She already has the appearance of an empress, and his mom is also very satisfied with her. If she is able to assist Master Gu in the future, then everything in this universe could be in his hands. At the same time Master Gu is surprised by this news, as he thinks to himself. In his memory, he don't seem to have much affection for her. Instead it has always been a one-sided love from her end. What's worth noticing is that, she has given in the past few months showing her talents, seeing how everything is panning out. Therefore he concludes that Yu Ming Kong is a new fated one, the girl of destiny and the villain being together. What sort of route are we going this time? Meanwhile, the old men are talking about Master Gu, and that they're afraid that now all the other geniuses and other sects will not be able to be his opponent, and it seems like the next lord will still fall into that family's hands. It has been three generations. In a change of scene, the cousin of Master Gu, named Gu Xianer, is talking to Sister Tao Yao and informing her that it's time for her to leave this place. Tao Yao asks if she is sure that she wants to leave. Her current cultivation level is only the sacred lord realm, 
those from the supreme Taoist sect and the descendants of the great immoral sects are stronger than her, to which Xian Er replies with a resounding yes. She wants to find the people of her family that were once with her grandfather and parents, after being exiled by her uncle for so many years. She's afraid that it would be impossible to bring back the glory days of her family. Of course the main reason is because of her brother. She used to be so close to him when she was young, but that merciless bastard instead stole her Dao bone and abandoned her. She will definitely take her revenge. Tao Yao says to Xian Er, her and Xian Er's masters will not interfere with her revenge this time, so it will all be dependent on herself. To which she replies that she understand, this is something that is only between her and him. She is really grateful for all these years that Tao Yao and her masters have spent on treating her so well. As sister Tao Yao could only sigh and worry, she gave something to her, to protect her life when the time comes, and adds if there is anyone out there that still recognizes this, she believes they won't make it hard for Sien Er. Therefore Sien Er thanks her sister and left, while she was touched by all the gifts she received before she left. So she shouts from her heart and says to them, that she is really grateful for all these years that all the masters have taken care and trained her, and promise once everything is over, she will definitely come back and visit all of them. In a later time, on the outskirt of the West Ling State, Ming Lao talks to the city lord and states that by the order of Master Gu, he have come to look for an individual that is from the Gu clan. They replied that there were a couple of individuals from the Gu clan that resided in the ancient Qingxia city a couple of years ago. Some of them were also experts similar to your honor. At the same time Sien Er is witnessing this on the sides, and now knows Master Gu actually sent someone all the way here to look for her, as she have just left the Divine Barren Lands, without much guarantee. Naturally she won't pick a fight with him, while threatening Master Gu in her mind that if he dare harm those from her clan, she will definitely kill him and toss ashes up into the open. This results in Master Gu to sneeze. He then open the system interface as he see his luck value has already reached 2,000 points, which is already way past those lucky fellows, as he wonder why is the color still black, and what will happen if it goes to zero. To which the system answers him that the luck value is a concept of the system, as luck itself is an existence that can't be grasped, and having it show as a numerical figure is just to help the host to have an easier time understanding it. The laws of heaven and earth will not apply to him because the host itself is an anomaly. Even if the luck value does reach zero it won't affect the host, nor his life, background, or fated encounters, etc. The only ways to increase his luck value is to subdue or kill those who have more luck. So Master Gu concludes that luck value to him is about the same as fate value, and since he have a way to obtain luck value, the exchange rate for luck value to fate value is 110, meaning the luck value is like savings that he can use for an exchange with the right opportunity as he grins for what he was about to do next, and it looks like it's time to shut those old people up. Therefore he called out to the system and exchanged 1000 luck values and add the points. Suddenly a large amount of aura pierced the sky, as shockwaves can be felt from miles away. Alarming the elders and notifying his father about Master Gu's breakthrough to the conferred king realm. While Master Gu is astonished by the conferred king realm, and it seems that he can now detect some of the temperament in this realm while he noticed that the sets of Tao bones still feel like they are in rejection with his body, and concludes that it is because Sien Er is still alive. As he thinks about that there are quite a bit of things that need to be handled, being the faded villain, one really can't expect for things to go smoothly. But to shut those old dudes up, it won't work by having just one thing against them, since now that he has a strong soul it's about time he learns some martial art in regards to it, so he bought the endless divine arts in the system shop. At the same time the elders felt the pure and ferocious chi, and afraid that there is no one else among his peers in the entire upper realm who can be compared to him. But before they can even finish their thoughts Master Gu requests all of the clan elders to have a meeting A with him. At a later time, Master Gu thanks the clan elders being present, and states that the purpose of inviting everyone today, was for an announcement he wanted to make, and from what he is seeing, it is the time to decide on the future head of the clan which the elder asks that they need some more discussions to decide, and adds that the position of head of the family is not to be decided lightly, but Master Gu clarifies that he thinks there is a misunderstanding. He is only here to inform all the elders of this matter today. He did not request them to come here to discuss it, and adds that he remember that's how the family rules were laid down. 
every family head is chosen from among the strongest of the generation, and if his skills are being doubted right now, he requests they all have a little spar. This anger one of the elders but was easily interrupted by Master Gu and continues his speech. If it's something about his martial arts abilities, there's no need for him to say anything. He is sure all of them know that in this world, the greatest method is martial arts. Since he, Gu Changa have stronger martial arts than all the juniors, his methods are naturally superior than theirs, while looking down at them. This statement angered Gu Chenzing, the son of his fourth uncle, and talks back to Master Gu saying, if any of them were to grow up by being held high with so many resources, their techniques would definitely be able to compete, and that all he have is a powerful father. To which Master Gu replies that he knows, all of them are all envious of his father. It is a good excuse to justify your juniors being trash. Weaklings like them are only suitable for standing below him. His father informs him that was over the line. But back to what he was saying, he wants the spot for the family head. Now, either of them can team up to prove their capabilities, or just remember to walk three meters away from him, and adds the Gu family headship is not something the likes of them can handle. While the descendants were triggered, the elders on the other hand is thinking that Master Gu really is mischievous, and if this is the case, they decide to just go along with what he is saying, so they can also see what level of skills he has. Since he never uses his martial arts skills in public, they all know he is probably hiding something. The father of Master Gu on the other hand is glad what his son is doing. Since the matter has come to this, today the elders will agree to Master Gu's wish, but as relatives, they hope he don't go overboard and have some discretion in his actions. To which Master Gu replies that he understands, and asks to let them all fight him together, and adds that he can suppress his cultivation to lower his realm by one, and if that does not do it for them, he can lower it by two. This provokes Gu Chenzing, so he launched the first attack, but Master Gu used his void ability to dodge the attack and counter-attacks Chenzing, making a shock wave. Now the elders realize that Master Gu is far too strong and believes the power he has been hiding is the extremely rare ability of Void that is on par with the ability of time, as they ask themselves if their previous suspicion was wrong, and does Master Gu not have a demonic heart? While Master Gu is stomping on Chenzing as he berates him, then he throws him on the side and went to the center and proposed to them to not waste time, and that all of them should come all at once, and so they did, and charge at him all at once but he dodges and counters attack, sending them flying one by one. Then another tried to attack from above, but Master Gu stepped back to dodge it. As another attack follows up, Thousand Swords is now chasing him from the rear, and another attack from the front. Master Gu then activates his void skill to redirect the attack to the other opponent, defeating her instantly, while he continues to run away. And when the others believes Master Gu to be cornered, he smirks while he knows he have lured them successfully, then cast a mystical art called the Heavenly God's Palm, defeating them all at once. This result has disappointed and at the same time frustrated the other elders, while Master Gu's father couldn't hide his smile. While Master Gu states that he did not overdo it, just like they asked him to, and asks if they have any more objections, the other elders decides to just settle with this and accept Master Gu as the future patriarch, while other was displeased. The other elder Zhu was even deciding to go in seclusion, but was interrupted by the news he had just received, asking Master Gu if he really is planning to bring back that lineage. So Master Gu uses his acting skills and activates his sentimental face and answers that they do not need to trouble themselves with this matter. Back then he was young and ignorant, so he will shoulder full responsibility and settle the past grievances himself. While the other was skeptical, Master Gu assures them that he know what he need to do. As the elders have seen his sentimental face, and was convinced that he have accepted his mistakes and willing to correct them, as Master Gu has proved, he is far stronger than the others and has the heart to unite with his former kin. Naturally, they do not have any further objections to it, as they order the descendants to bow down to their future patriarch, so the descendants congratulates young Master Gu while Master Gu assures them that he will definitely not let everyone down. After that was settled, the father of Master Gu discussed something with him and asks if were the decisions he made today thought thoroughly, to which Master Gu replies with a resounding yes, and about the thirteenth uncle's lineage, he must have guessed his intentions already as well, and there is still guilt left in father's heart. 
he is bringing them back, not only to pacify them so that he can take the future head of the family as a matter of course, but also to make up for it. While this statement was appreciated by his father, he can't help but wonder how his disposition are much more mature compared to before. Master Gu explained by showing his demonic nature to him. And explained that, the rise of his cultivation base is slowly increasing his control over it, to which his father asks if does that mean he used to be dominated by his demonic nature. Master Gu replies that it was the case, however, it doesn't affect him as much anymore. Instead, he can even thank it for honing his primordial spirit and will. While the father now realizes that his son have suffered much over the years, and now that he is no longer dominated by the demonic nature, he can finally rest easy, as he leaves. While Master Gu could only think that the previous owner of this body has done too many evil deeds before, that his own father doesn't even believe him easily, but with the demonic heart, he can just blame everything on it. As he asks the system, about when did he cross over to this world, and will his demonic nature be a problem in the future? But the system could only say that the hidden dangers of the previous host have already been resolved during initialization. After hearing this he sighs that all his question was not answered but at least he can be more at ease. From now on, he is the only one controlling his life. And now on his way to move on to other matters, he then went to his room and summons Yen Ji, and state that there is something that he needs her to do. But before that, he helps her regain her physical body. As this shocks Yen Ji and thinks about when she started training Yi Chen at the time, she had always held the littlest hope for regaining her physical body and believed it would take a long time for her to see that day. She never imagined that it could finally happen now after a series of unexpected events. While Yen Ji hesitates, Master Gu asks if she did not want to, to which Yen Ji clarifies that it's just, she have never helped young master with anything before, she don't get why young master is so kind towards her. Master Gu tells her to not worry, because he have his reasons, and comforts her, as he gives her a flower, and ingredients to form her physical body. As it was a success, Master Gu went over to Yen Ji, and looks at her from up close while making Yen Ji blush. Then Yen Ji, thanks Master Gu for his kindness, and promised to him that she will die for anything young master commands her to do. Therefore Master Gu commands Yen Ji to go to the land of forsaken immortals, and see if there's anything special hidden in the depths of the land, and make sure to contact him if there are any findings. And before she leaves Master Gu gave a domain-breaking talisman. If she meets a powerful enemy, he advises her to not hesitate to use this to escape, because her safety matters the most. So, Yen Ji promised she will take care of this matter to the best of her abilities. Hit that like button and thanks for watching.